Number 18, determine the oxidation states of the elements in the compounds listed and none of the oxygen containing compounds are peroxides or superoxides. And then we have letter B of the bunch. We have to find the oxidation states of calcium, oxygen, and hydrogen in calcium hydroxide, which is CaOH2. Okay, so Ca, whoa. As I'm going, more, as more and more questions go on, I'm writing bigger and bigger and bigger, but I got no problem with that. <laughs> um, okay, so remember, we use our handy dandy oxidation state table or trend that we have to know. If you guys want to know why this trend exists as it does, you could check out number 16A in this playlist. The playlist button is at the end of the video if you want to check out the playlist if you guys aren't on it already. Uh, but, you know, as of right now, just know that um, these charges are run by groups. They don't go by periods, okay? So basically, anybody in group one would lose one electron plus one. Plus means loss. And minus on the right sides mean gain electron. So all these go by um, the group trends. Okay. So now I see that I have one lonely element, right? And because we've done tons and tons of problems, I can identify that OH is a polyatomic. OH is a polyatomic. So... As of right now, I'm going to just look at this as one single unit, one single polyatomic hydroxide, okay? Because I just want to separate these two things out. Remember, when we made compounds, we had um, charges in the upper right-hand corner, and then we crisscross them down to get the compound. So... We're just doing the opposite here. We're going to take the subscripts and crisscross them back up to see what we get. And what we get is the oxidation states, a.k.a. the charges. So I have calcium, Ca. There's a one, a secret one here. And then I have two hydroxides. So I'm just going to keep the OHs by themselves because I have my two subscripts that I can crisscross back up. Let's see what's what's going on here. This one crisscrosses up, telling me that my OH as a whole was a negative one charge. This two, whoop, this two, and maybe I'll do it in a different color, the two crisscrossed back up to calcium, telling me that calcium was a plus two. And remember, Pluses are in the front, minuses are in the back. That's just standard notation. So, what do we have for right now? This told us that calcium was a plus two charge, and my hydroxide, OH collectively, was a negative one. Now, we should know by our polyatomics that hydroxide is always a negative one right? We always see OH being a negative one charge. So if this is true, this has to be true. And we successfully eliminated calcium's oxidation state from the pack. So we know, and maybe I'll just, you know, erase this. We know already that calcium was a plus two. That's its oxidation state. Calcium had to lose two electrons, E negative electrons. But now we just have to single out the oxygen and the hydrogen. Now, for OH, right, it told us that none of the oxygen-containing compounds are peroxides or superoxides, so that means that oxygen will follow the trend. Oxygen will be a negative 2 charge. It will have an oxidation state of negative 2. And oxygen's over here. It follows the trend. So, by that little snippet, they told us that, you know, oxygen really is a negative two charge. What is hydrogens, right? 
Well, let's look here. If calcium is over here, and look, calcium was a plus 2. Oxygen was a negative 2, right? And in this example, right, of OH being a negative 1, if oxygen was the negative 2, what charge does hydrogen have to be? A plus or a minus? Remember, if one of them is positive, well, I just kind of just gave it away to you, but if one of them is negative, the other one has to be positive. So I at least know that hydrogen is a positive, right? And looky here, hydrogen is in group 1. Oh, it's a plus 1. And does that make sense? Negative 2 coming together with the plus 1, so literally negative 2 plus 1 would equal a negative 1. Oh, that's why that's the total charge. So we know, or we just successfully separated them out, right? Oxygen was the negative 2, hydrogen is the plus 1. And there you go. So oxygen is the negative 2. It gained two electrons. Each oxygen gained two electrons in this process of making the compound. And hydrogen was a plus 1. Each hydrogen successfully lost one electron when it was making this compound. And that's it. We found out all three of the elements, and we're done. Pretty simple. What do you think? Um, I think it's pretty simple. But let me know in the comments. Give this video a like if this helped you. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to. And tell your friends, tell your classmates to get the word out that this channel exists. We love helping you guys out, and we just want you to you guys to do awesome in your classes, all right? Uh, it's really, you know, heartwarming to see that, you know, some of the comments saying that, you know, you guys have been getting A's on your classes, and that's so amazing. And no, I couldn't ask for anything, anything more. So keep it up, guys, okay? You guys are working so hard. I'm so proud of you, and... Let's, let's kill it, all right? Moving on to the next lesson. I'll see you there. Bye-bye.